Hey everybody, today's review is brought to you by Painful Pleasures, and this is on the Injecta Flight X1. My name is Ty Pilata, and that's my dog shaking his collar. Um, we're going to get into the positives and negatives of this machine, what I love about it, what I would like to see in a future version of it, and so on. Just like I do with all my other videos, and regardless of this being sponsored, I do want you guys to know that I'm going to give you my honest opinion as always on everything that goes on here. So this is the Flight X1 Wireless from Injecta, and I've never had any problems with uh, a Nano in the past, and so far I've only been using this one 30 days, but I've had no problems with this at all as well. So this one has two motors. You've got the main drive motor, which is a brushless motor made by Injecta, and a Nano motor that's a worm drive. That worm drive only drives your needle up and down rather than having to twist a grip like you would traditionally on a click grip for cartridges. Um, it's a nice feature. Um, although when I before I got my hands on the machine, I thought it was a little overkill. It's really nice to be able to do all the functions on the machine with one hand and not have to constantly touch the machine with like an ink covered or ointment covered glove, even though you're bagged up. It just keeps it cleaner and neater. There are five cam options available for this machine. It comes with a 3.25 cam in place with the carbon rigid bar. The carbon rigid bar is definitely an improvement over the original plastic rigid bar in the first machine. Uh, carbon fiber keeps its shape and always goes back to true straight every single time with every hit. So it's a much more efficient, smoother hit than you got out of the old plastic rigid bar. The, the five stroke lengths that are available for it are uh, 2.5, 3 millimeter, 3.25 that's in it, 3.5, and 4 millimeter. Uh, most people are going to want to try this as a shader when they first get it. You're going to want to use that 3.5, and I recommend starting with the carbon bar because it is excellent. If you need a bigger stroke length, um, go with what you would normally use on one of your other machines and give that a try first. If you're unsure of what you, what, what you might like, uh, you can get a full cam kit that has the other four cams in it, all as one big package deal. That would be nice, you know, to hang on to in case you do want to try different stroke lengths. But if you're tried and true, somebody who only uses, say, four millimeter, go ahead and just pick up the one. So these are the torsion bars everyone will remember from the first one. Comes with a medium and a hard bar. I remember from the first version of the Nano, I broke a couple of the soft bars. So I believe that's why they just give you these two. You can still buy those other soft bars online as well. This is the first machine that I've had of theirs that I'm actually using this carbon bar that it comes with. And I like it a lot, so I'm not really sure if I'm even gonna go back to that medium bar yet or just stick with this one. This thing's great so far. All right, so changing the cam. We're gonna take this front cover off that protects the cam. And spin this guy around here. I'll show you exactly what that point looks like once I get it off of the machine. But you're gonna spin your cam upright until you can see your Allen set screw. Stick the smaller of the two Allen keys that they give you with the injector tool. Stick it right in the slot, right to the side of the worm gear. There's a little bit of a divot on the side of the worm gear housing that's gonna allow you to rest that tool right in on an angle. Turn it one rotation counterclockwise. You'll be able to just pick that cam off, take it apart the spot I was talking about here on the bottom. Also, if you see these markings to the side here, there are three together and then two dots separate. The three together in a line are your three millimeters and the two dots that are separate are your 0.2. So that's your 3.25 stroke. Every one of their cams are marked like this. So even as this little printed plastic on the front here wears off, you always know which side you're gonna you know, which cam you've got in your hand based on those little drill marks that are never gonna come off of that brass counterweight. I do really like this one. This is the um, anodized black aluminum, or might be powder coated or something, I'm really not sure. Uh, but I thought it was a stainless steel one. It was marked wrong on the website when I purchased it. It is aluminum and it's actually a great weight, so you don't need the extra weight of the stainless with this guy at all. Um, the balance is really nice with this machine. What I like about the old school grips, you know, tattooing for 23 years makes me remember you know what the old original coil machines and rotaries felt like when you held them in your hands with a standard grip you had room to rest your finger and that's something that I do miss with the pen style 
on machines today, everything's just a straight tube, but this actually felt really comfortable and then gave you a good balance as well between the grip and the machine, resting it on your thumb. If you like more of a one-piece machine, like a pen style machine, this sniper grip is going to be a good choice. It's the smaller of them. The Ergo one is even stranger looking than this guy. But um, the, the grip has a lot of uh, machined bevels and finger markings in it that kind of dictate the way you're going to hold this machine. If you wrap it up with a bunch of Coflex, you can really hold it in any position because you're going to kind of flatten out all of those contours. I reposition my hand depending on what I'm doing. I don't always hold it in the same spot on the machine. So again, this one, you use the larger Allen key that they give you, pop it into the Injecta tool, tighten it just till it's snug. There's also uh, a warning that comes in the package not to over tighten it. This is just um, a plastic tube vise, so if you crank the hell out of that thing, you'll probably just go right through the plastic. Um, there, it does leave a mark behind, but it doesn't affect um, the thumb nut when you put it back on at all. That doesn't mess the threads up. So this grip has a thumb hole. It's got a flat spot on the back side where your finger rests in it, and it's got two little marks on the side. Depending on how you hold your machine, I guess your index finger could go into that guy right there. Um, if you're tattooing straight up like this, it's fine, but if you're getting in a position where say you, you only pull lines towards you and you have to pull a line back towards you this way and you needed to rotate your grip a little bit to do that, there's no more flat spots on this grip for you. Now it's, it's, it's definitely a, a different feeling altogether. So if you move your hand around and don't hold the grip in the same exact spot every single time, you're gonna to wanna to go something more like this, which is just a round grip. That way you can dictate how you wanna hold your machine and not let a grip tell you how to. The batteries. Here's the charger that it comes with. It comes with one large battery and one small battery. The idea was to try to give you some sort of a weight savings, but by the time you add this thimble and this battery, and that thimble just makes up the, the empty gap so that you can still stick it in the machine and it functions properly. The weight of these two compared to this one, it's so nominal. Uh, to, to save a tiny little bit of weight, you're better off just getting used to the bigger battery. It's not that cumbersome. Pop the cover off the back of the battery, pop your battery out. This battery goes in positive down, so you're gonna put the ass end of the battery upwards. This cover stays on really nice. If you find your cover is a little too tight, you can take the torque screw that it comes with and Loosen one of these side screws here, just a tiny bit, and you'll see your cover will slide in and out much looser. But if you snug it back down, the cover fits nice and tight. Uh, mine came a little loose and the cover was a little bit loose but never fell out of place. I just tightened it down and now this thing's tight. Let's go over the functions of the machine. There's one main button. That button turns them on and off. It also turns your speed up and down. So you can turn the machine on in any position, which I think is great, being able to turn it on from the upright. To turn it off, machine has to be upside down. Also, to change your speed, machine needs to be running. You can either have it on its side, pressing that main button, or have it on its other side to bring it back down. You can tip the machine forward on an angle, tip it to either side, that'll bring your voltage up and down. I like to do it one step at a time because I never really leave six volts. When it's in the resting position, watch how that, see it bounces back to the top. The top is letting me know now that my battery is full. That will go down the scale just like your speed goes down that scale as you start to lose more battery. When you start to run out of battery completely, it'll let you know. So the voltage up and down is main button. And de depending on which direction you're holding the machine, you're gonna go up in voltage or down in voltage. And I find that to be one of the easiest features on the machine is just holding it like this, pressing that button in the back with my thumb and changing my voltage up and down. And then let's go over the needle depth adjustment. Your machine has to be running it in the upside down position. Your up arrow on the machine is gonna bring your needle back into the machine a little bit. And then you get that red light on there when you've maxed that out and it's all the way up. Again, in the down position, pushes your needle further out. Another red light. That's it. The function on the machine is super simple one main button, and then two side buttons to push your needle up and down. Some features I'd like to see on a future model though, I'd like to be able to start and stop this machine in this position. That's not the end of the world. You get used to that rather quick, you know? 
but I really want to be able to stop it in, in a regular upright position as well as not have to turn it upside down when it's running to change my needle depth. I'd rather change my needle depth from this upright position, which is not an option right now. So that would be cool to see that on a future model because I don't really think that turning the machine upside down all, all the time is practical or necessary. It's also not a deal breaker for me. I love the way the machine tattoos. The saturation is amazing. There's hardly any trauma on the skin. So for me, having to turn the machine upside down just to turn it off or to change the needle depth, once I'm done changing the needle depth, I'm good and I'm gonna keep it there. Um, it's not a deal breaker as far as taking it out of my daily rotation. I love the machine enough to continue to use it, even with those tiny pet peeves. One other thing I'd like to see uh, for the future model is getting this, this plastic tube vise over to aluminum or magnesium, something that's a little more durable. Uh, I'm just afraid that over time, some of those threads are gonna wear out a little bit. One feature I'd like to see on this machine in the next version, uh, an RCA jack right here. We travel a lot and if you forget your batteries or your charger, you're dead in the water with this machine. Unless you can get somebody uh, from Amazon to send you a charger and batteries that are compatible overnight or the next day, what are you gonna do now? You have to bring a backup machine and then you can no longer tattoo with your favorite machine. So that's definitely something I'd like to see on a future model here is RCA backup for the idiot that forgot his batteries, like me. Hey, thanks for watching this video. I look forward to continuing to bring you guys tips and tricks for tattooing and great machine reviews. So if you liked this and it was helpful, um, please like and subscribe. Thanks again all, see you later.